Welcome to Real Life and a special edition of Real Life. And I can honestly tell you right now for a lot of reasons, but a few of them, this is going to be a program that you're going to want to watch. I can promise you right now it's going to generate emotion in you and passion in you because of the, the topic that we're going to take on. And uh, there, for you, there may not be a right answer just yet. Uh, for me, there is. I'm sorry to say I'm, I'm looking to the Bible for the answer. Not that you're not, but we're going to hit this head on today because it is one of the number one topics in the Christian church in the world today with what's going on. But with me, before we dive into this, with me is my good friend for many decades now yep. uh, and close friend, Amir Serfate. Amir yes. has been um, blessed of the Lord where he is a rare, a rare Jew for this reason. Uh, the Bible tells us that the veil has been placed over the eyes of the Jew, which is amazing. Corinthian tells us that the 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 believer, the non-believers of the world have been veiled by Satan. Mm -hmm. You can never say that about a Jew because the Bible says that God has blinded the Jew. But in his sovereign move, God lifts the veil. And Amir is one of the people of God, the Jewish people who he has pulled back the veil and he knows uh, Yeshua, Jesus as Messiah, and so for those of for those who do not know, they don't know that you and I have a great relationship yes, together. Yeah, we've known each other for twenty five years. Exactly, it's crazy. You, you know, my son, uh, you held him uh -huh. when he was three months old. I remember. He's married now. <laughs> He's married, and I feel very old right now. Um, no. I'm just saying that. Uh, yeah, we've known each other for the longest time, and uh, and uh, we went through so much uh, with this country. So much with this country, so much uh, where you've had, you and I have had amazing opportunities to speak in various parts. That's true. On Bible prophecy, and it's yes. been amazing, Amir. Mm -hmm. And if I die today, I mean this sincerely, if I die yeah. today, uh, I die a rich man in the faith. Mm -hmm. It's been great. By the way, uh, here we are in the 21st century in the world that we're in, and I'm publicly thankful for your consistency with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Uh, Same here. We're running a race, and there's yes. less now than there were at nice. the beginning, you know? True. So, so uh, listen, as we were talking about in the intro, um, here's the big deal, and this is very unrehearsed. Um, everyone's talking about the, the mark of the beast, that the vaccine or vaccines mm. are, in fact, the mark of the beast, that we are somehow being tricked that we are in the tribulation period, the mm -hmm. Antichrist is here somewhere, and that the vaccination push by these nations and by these uh, manufacturers is the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, I must confess, I, I'm sad to hear that kind of dialogue. We have something called Happening Now, which is designed to answer things like this. But here you and I today, just bringing it up right now, there's people angry at me right now because I'm not saying, it's the mark of the beast, run. Look, regarding you getting the vaccine or not, that's not what I'm talking about. That's up to you. The, the, the vaccine, I don't know. Is it safe? I don't know. Uh, is it effective? I don't know. Forget about that part. Is it? Does it contain uh, uh, embryonic uh, human tissue? I don't know and I'm not gonna get into that. That's not the topic. Friends, listen, push it off to the side. Is getting the vaccine, according to the Bible, get, receiving the mark of the beast? Why, if it is, why? If it's not, Amir, why? Well, first of all, it's not. It's not for at least four reasons. First of all, it's not because in order to have the mark of the beast, you need to have a beast. And the beast is not a system as they suggest, so it is already here. And then the Antichrist is the leader of a system. The Bible says the beast is an individual. Exactly. Person. And the Bible doesn't say, and then comes the leader of the beast. That's right. Then comes the beast. The beast uh -huh. is the person. So that's the first thing. Right. Second thing, the, the mark of the beast is a sign of when you are deep into the tribulation, that's which right. we haven't started that's tribulation. Right. Number three, the mark of the beast is something that is on your forehead or your right hand. And number four, it's a token of worship. This is key. Yeah, and why is it key? Because it doesn't say that believers will lose salvation if they take the mark of the beast. Believers cannot take the mark of the beast because they don't worship the beast. So my point is, 
of all these re- for, for all these reasons, A, we're not in tribulation, there is no beast, the vaccine has nothing to do with forehead or your right hand necessarily, and no believer that is taking the vaccine today is pledging any wor- allegiance or he is in, uh, worshiping Satan incarnated, which is uh, the Antichrist. Yep, we have to remember that. That's good. We have to remember the fact that, that Satan, when he comes in, and remember, he's going to inhabit uh, the Antichrist. It's a very creepy thought, but Satan is going to possess a man. And think of Satan looking out of the guy's eyes. And Satan is trying, he wants worship. Remember he told Jesus, just bow down and worship me. Satan wants worship. You're not going to be tricked into accepting the mark of the beast, okay? Like, for example, what Amir just talked about, I don't believe we're going to be here. I believe the church has to be off of the globe, off of the world, before the Antichrist can be revealed. Second Thessalonians yeah, 2, I think, absolutely. is very clear about that. world. He is not going to trick you and say, I got you. You, you, none of you, I pray, but if you are left behind, friend, if you experience him coming, he is going to require you to worship him. Yes. You're going to want to, by the way, you're going to get in line. Hello. Because you will agree with his policies and with yes. his agenda. The Bible says the world will worship him and they will, mm-hmm. they're going to get in line yeah, to, to get his mark. And by the way, that mark is regarding uh, revealed in scripture, uh, selling, econo- selling, 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 buying and, and selling. Buying. It says in the Bible, Revelation 13, specifically buying and yes. selling. Yeah. And so we need to turn down the panic. I understand the passion and we're excited that you, that you're, you're, uh, you're watching. But we have to watch with a biblical wisdom. And this vaccine, look, I'm old enough to remember when credit cards came out with the mic, with Same the strip, thing. the magnetic strip. A lot of Christians thought this was the mark of the beast. And, and then the barcode. The barcode, the barcode was the mark of the beast. Yep. And then they came out with the, the chip, the hologram chip or whatever yeah. it was, not that mark of the beast. Yeah. Listen, you will have to see the church removed from the earth. In the rapture, you will have to see the coming of of at least four global leaders that come out of ten. And then one man will arise predominantly, the Bible tells us. And the three and a half year midpoint part, his true colors are going to come out. We're not there and we're not, we are not going to get there because we are the church. And it's sad because a lot of of those who believe it's the mark of the beast are pre-trib Rapture believers, no and I'm, I'm like, how can you be a pre-tribulation rapture believer and, ah. and, and tell people of something that is a, a very, very amazing uh, a chapter in the tribulation itself? The Bible says when Jesus spoke to the, um, the, um, the angel of uh, Philadelphia, he says, behold, I'm coming quickly. And then he says, I will, because you have kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world. The whole to, world. To what? To, um, uh, to test those who dwell on the earth. And why is it saying that? Test those who dwell on the earth. We will not be dwelling on the earth We're anymore. not earth dwellers. That's it. We never have we been will, in we, Christ. It, so that's the point. <laughs> and it's also important that people understand that um, Revelation 13 I'm there. Yeah. is the foundation for the mark of the beast. Yep. You don't take me to Daniel and talk about some mm-hmm. world systems and then throw that that's in. Right. Because it, it makes no sense. Yep. If you want to talk about the mark of the beast, go to where the mark of the beast appears. Exactly right. And it's in Revelation 13, and it has nothing to do with vaccine. or. Any, and by the way, Pastor Jack, as, as you said, whether the vaccine is something you want to take or not, that's up to you. But some people, like soldiers, nurses, doctors, some missionaries even, they need to take vaccines in order to, to serve in their line first of duty. First responders. Many yes. places in the world right now, yes. at, at this moment, first responders exactly. are being required to have it. And they, they're great, being required to have it. Am I going to tell them you just lost your salvation? It's a, <sighs> you know, missionaries going to Africa, yes, they to. need to take yeah. certain vaccines or else they can't go. Yes. And those vaccines that they are taking have what people try to say that the, the COVID vaccine has, and yet they must take it. So look, we must 
remember whether again if you have a problem with vaccine yeah we're not talking about the ethics of it no. forget the ethics T- that, put that, it that, aside a, we can do another program someday about the ethics of it yes. that's fantastic but don't take it to the spiritual realm of losing salvation by which of by ways of insinuating that you are receiving the mark of the beast and by the way okay. how can you receive the mark of the beast as a believer the well it's not going to happen because the Holy Spirit wouldn't allow it to happen, on top of the fact that, again, in what is known as premillennial, pre-tribulational theology, right, is the fact that the church is the vehicle. Notice how I say this. The church is the vehicle by which the Holy Spirit restrains evil. We do not have the power or the ability to withhold evil. The Holy Spirit in the earth right now, since the day of Pentecost, mind you, has been restraining evil. The Bible is very clear in 2 Thessalonians 2 that the Holy Spirit will step aside. We understand that the Antichrist will be revealed once the church is delivered, John 14, verses 1, 2, and 3. When that happens, then this onslaught of deception is going to come, and this man shall be revealed. Yeah. It says right there, he shall you be revealed. You know, and by insinuating that you may have lose your salvation, that means the blood of Jesus is weaker than the vaccine. <laughs> the blood of Jesus is weaker because a drop of something from a, a an injection is stronger than the blood of Christ. How, I mean, come yeah. on, let's, yeah. let's be real. Nowhere in Scripture, and again, this is another topic, but nowhere in Scripture can you or does it declare that once you have been born again, you can be unborn again. And this is a very critical thing. There are a lot of believers. Jesus said in John, in Matthew 13, regarding the sower and the seed, he even said, these are they, speaking of the seed that fell upon mm. uh, ground that was, uh, the, the seed was really ripped out by cares and yes. the deceitfulness of riches and fear and all that. Jesus said, these are they who believe for a while. Isn't that interesting? You need to make sure, friend, that your, that your belief has brought you to faith. Because those who have come to faith in Christ, and you're born again, there's nowhere in Scripture that you can show me where you get unborn again. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. Yeah. Okay. And that's a very serious teaching and doctrine right then and there. But the fact is this. None of God's kids are going to, in the church age, be tricked into taking the mark of the beast and wake up and lament that while they were sleeping, something happened to them. Ain't going to happen. Secondly, those who are in the tribulation period in those days who are believers, isn't it interesting? It says that they're going to die for their faith. They're going to be beheaded. Exactly. Look, they're not tricked. They know so clearly. Tribulation saints, not the church. Tribulation saints are going to realize this guy's imposing this mark and pledge allegiance to him and worship him. Not going to do it. Well, you're going to do it or you're going to die. And you know, where do I get in line? At least one scriptures that they take is from the words of Jesus of how the elect might be deceived. They take it out of context. That's Israel. You know, the elect, the elect in that, in that, in the context. Exactly. But, so they but, say, oh, even believers can be deceived just, by the Antichrist. That's See? amazing. I just heard this. Th- I was driving yesterday listening to Christian radio and a notable pastor said, we, you need to be, you need to watch out because, because even the elect are going to be deceived. And I went, no, yeah. oh, no, exactly. because the Bible, Jesus said that deceptions come in in such a way that. If it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived. Number one, if you want to wiggle the church into that, go ahead. If you want to wiggle Israel into that, so you should. Here's the point. If it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived. That means it's impossible for the elect to be deceived. That's how nasty and, and crooked and deceiving the days are that are coming, but... You, the believer, will not be deceived. Mm. And tribulation saints clearly will not be deceived because they will wind up dying for That's their faith. That's what makes them saints. <laughs> they, because they're not yep. being deceived. Yep. It's because they are taking it all the way. Look, they are probably going to mm. be even pro- uh, bolder than we are. And, and, and uh, think about it. Yep. We don't have that 
either you believe or uh, either you believe and have your head chopped off yeah. or you just uh, uh, you know align with Satan. We don't have it right now. Right. That's the only option they have in 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 in, in uh, the tribulation. Think about it. Think about the intensity of that because as the church, the church is called to live for Jesus. Now, are there elements of the church that have uh, been brought to the realm of martyrdom? Absolutely, since Stephen. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna continue until the church is out of here. Uh, but the tribulation saints, they're not called to live for Jesus. Isn't that interesting? Yep. They're yep. called to die for Jesus. You, they are, exactly. And that proves to you that even the tribulation saints will not be deceived. And you're not gonna be deceived either regarding this vaccine talk. Um, it's a, Yeah, it's so important, that, and that brings us to another confusion between the church and the saints of the tribulation. You see, when you start making a big salad uh, from the, all of these things, then you take things that are for them yep. and you apply them to here, yep. and that's when you're wrong. Yep. In fact, I'm glad you just brought that up because you and I are going to be doing some ministry tonight. In my mind, preparing for that, one of the verses I'm going to go to tonight in light of what's happening in America and what's probably soon going to happen in the world because people are looking for excuses to act up anyway is... In the last days, Jesus said, because love will grow cold, lawlessness will abound. Now, I'm going to use that verse tonight to reference the violence that we're seeing in our world. But I'm actually pushing the envelope of biblical interpretation by saying that. Yes. You say, well, Jack, what do you mean? There is violence in the world. Yes, yes, I do. I understand. But the truth is, what Jesus said then regarding Matthew 24, for example, is regarding the tribulation, period. It's very important yes. to know that. Are we going to see more violent days increase? Yes, those are birth pains. But there is a time coming when ultimate violence will hit the earth. And Jesus was referring to Matthew chapter 24. Mm -hmm. He was speaking to his people, to his Israel. brethren, exactly. to Israel. That's why Matthew 24 is so Jewish. When he says, when you are on the housetop, come down mm -hmm. and flee. You don't live on your housetop. Exactly. And <laughs> they're, the, they're the one that, that he referred to when he said... Uh, for the sake of the elect, those days have been shortened. shortened. Exactly. That's for the Jews. Exactly. And the that's believers. the point. When you take things out of context, that's when you fall into that's the trap right. of, of misinterpreting the Bible. And, uh, and that allows you, that opens the gate for you to start applying the wrong things to the church today. Yeah. And you know what? As well, if we need all of this... Uh, as if we don't have enough pressure right now. And, and let's face it, in America at least, it's a new era. Yeah, you get to fly to Dubai soon. I, I, yeah. So Very soon. I have to stay here. Yeah. <laughs> can I go with you? Can I go to Dubai <clears throat> where it's Well, safe? I can tell you one thing. Um, America today is, today, at the date that we are of recording what? right yeah. now, America today is not the America that we had until... Uh, January 6. That's it. It's a different country. I've, I came to America to watch history. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that's the history I'm going to see. You saw history, but it wasn't the history. One. Different one no, than no, I anticipated. anticipated. Exactly. I anticipated some, uh, you know, courageous act to... By a, by a vice president? Correct. To restore the trust of people in your election system. And uh, what I saw was actually the end of the Republic and the beginning of, uh, something. of, of something like almost equal to uh, civil war. Man, I know oh, it's a bummer. We only have a few minutes left. But that, as much as it pains me to say this as an American, this is a weird thing to say. I don't expect You know, only a Christian, I think, will understand what I'm about to say. I barely get it myself. <laughs> but what's happened to America is it pains me as an American. As a Christian, it, it causes me to draw closer to the kingdom and to look up even yes. a little more yeah. vertical because this has to happen. Israel must be abandoned for Ezekiel 38 mm -hmm. to take place. Yes. Uh, wow. Because we all know, we all know that uh, Trump being president, he would have defended Israel and given Israel anything and everything it wanted to defend itself. And we know that because he did it. <laughs> and you can speak to that. Yes. I can't. I mean, I paid for it, and these you guys the, got yeah. to play with it. These were the best you, years. Exactly. And those are the four good years. Like, you know, Joseph had seven good years. And now, 
Uh, Unfortunately, we're going to have uh, whatever it is. It's we uh-huh. all know it's going to be bad, and we know it's going to be bad because the bad people rejoices. Right? Oh now, wait, yeah. Listen, everybody. The bad people well, rejoices. You said if you, I don't know how you voted, and I don't want to know if you live in the states. But it's a pretty bad day <laughs> when the person that wins the election gets the praise and adoration from Iran and China and Russia that they say, congratulations on your election. We're so happy for you. Not a good day. Not, if you voted for uh, what makes Iran happy, not a good day. Not even for Iran, believe it or not, it's not yeah. a good day. And it's not a good day that uh, the oh. president of the United States, he is being taken off the social media and the president of Iran is being kept on social media when it's the president of Iran that called from social media on that platform for the destruction of Israel. And yet, so my point is this, the good became bad, the bad is turning good, darkness is now light, light is now darkness, bitter becomes sweet mm-hmm. and sweet... Be- Isaiah 5, I mean, we are watching some, uh-huh. it's amazing. It's, it is amazing where just the other day, uh, we heard Joe Biden say, we need to all come together. Yeah. And then uh, in less than 24 hours, uh, the, 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 the chant was, they need to pay. We need to go get them. We need to destroy their businesses. We need yeah. to crush them. We need to make sure that they never have a chance to vote again and all this stuff. And I'm, I'm laughing because it, I'm not surprised. You're not surprised. It's the people that they've always been. Yeah. But listen, when you give, when you give a chainsaw to a, a two year old, that's not a good thing. Uh, not every, everybody, not everybody can handle power. And we're seeing that right now. And, um, the Republic, uh, prophetically speaking, time-wise prophetically, the Republic is probably over. Uh, could God save the Republic? God could do anything he wants. Yes. But is it God's will? I don't know, because... Judging by what we see, well, we're not sure. Not sure, but judging by, by God's divine judgment, the yes. shoe fits. It makes sense. It exactly. makes sense that we be yeah. destroyed by whatever means, because don't think for a moment the United States is going to escape the judgment of God. We've killed, we've murdered 60 million people. I'm not talking about COVID. We've murdered 60 million people in the womb mm-hmm. since 1973. And God saw every one of those things. And uh, he holds nations accountable for human sacrifice. Yeah. But we have good news. The Christians have the promises that others don't. And these are the dark days where the light of Christ can shine much brighter in our lives and through our lives. I believe there's a lot of scared people among the non-believers. And I believe that, unfortunately, there's a lot of scared people among the believers also. But I think that this broadcasts like this are, are designed to restore the hope uh, in, in people's life because mm. our, uh, our hope is not in the things that we see, but in the things that we cannot see, but are promised awesome. right here. I it's, love it. It's beautiful. As you say that, the thought comes to my mind. You're speaking right now and you're mm-hmm. speaking truth and your body, your mm-hmm. physical body is able to do that because his body is breathing invisible air. Think of it. It's the invisible that's keeping you alive. Exactly. In the spirit realm, the promises of God. Isn't it interesting? And, and we'll have to wrap up time-wise with this, you guys. We love John 14 because it's all about Jesus coming to get us. Mm-hmm. But wait a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah. In my father's house, so many mansions. Mm-hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Verse 1 says, let not your heart be troubled. Be troubled. Jesus never wasted a word. That statement in verse 1 probably means... It's going to be a very troubling time. Didn't the scriptures, didn't the Lord say to Paul, don't be, don't be troubled. There's many people Mm -hmm. in the city. Yeah, in uh, Corinth. In Corinth that that are going to believe. Acts 17. why Why did God have to encourage Paul? Because Paul was discouraged. When Jesus says regarding his coming for us, don't let your heart be troubled. That presupposes it's going to be a trying time. Friends, Hope in Christ Jesus. Trust Him. Listen, this book has never failed. 